Um, thank you very much to John Doyle, Director of Services uh, Client Support at the Men's Development Network in Ireland for joining us today for um, a short interview on the grant that you received from WPEN. Um, so thank you very much, John, for joining me today. Um, <laughs> I would like to start us off by you telling us a bit about the Men's Development Network, the MEND program, and the, your grant um, and your project. Okay, so the Men's Development Network has been in existence for about 25 years, and it started um, a local-based project of men looking to support each other. They were parents and they felt they were a bit isolated. But anyway, over the years, the project has developed in particular in two um, sides of the house, as it were, where there's a focus on uh, men's health advocacy, um, men's um, development programs. But um, on the side of the house that I'm um, specifically responsible for, we have the Men Domestic Violence Intervention Program the uh, male advice line for male victims of domestic abuse and our counselling service. And the MEND um, program specifically um, works with, with male perpetrators with an integrated partner support service. And it's within the context of the MEND program that we looked um, to WWP for the, um, the proposal, the, the the grant proposal that that came out from from you. So our proposal was to train people and create a, a residential program for male perpetrators um, of domestic abuse, and this very much responds not only to a recognised need that we have which is for men who are referred to the programme and are suitable to the programme. However, due to practical issues uh, to do with transport um, and maybe um, shift work, they cannot make it to our evening sessions. So we wanted to respond to them and to see was there some way we could could create a program that would be appropriate and would be safe and would respond to their needs, but also as part of the government's third national strategy, there is an action which invites people to make programs more available to those hard to reach or engage with groups. So we feel that um, our project is responding both to that need and to, to responding to the strategy. Um, so could you maybe go into the components that you developed as, or that you're planning to develop regarding this program? Yeah, so we're really focusing, I suppose, on what I consider to be a co-design piece in the sense that while we're getting outside trainers to come in for two sessions, one uh, a morning online, and that will be with Paul Wolflight, who's one of the developers of our Standard Choices program. And then a two day um, residential workshop with two local trainers who specialize in residential group work. But our idea is to bring them in, but also to bring in our facilitators, um, six who we have chosen, with some partner support workers, with our local area coordinators. So along with being trained, there's also a sense that we're co-creating on those trainings. We're co-creating and mapping out the structure and content of a weekend residential program for the men. So it's very much as a co-design, but with some support from external um, trainers who have expertise in, in, in the areas. Okay, so um, that sounds quite challenging. So maybe mm. you could share some of the lessons that you've learned in the process. Mm. Um, I mean, they can both be challenging lessons or, you know, beautiful, wonderful lessons mm. <laughs> that mm. you discovered. Um, or some of the exciting takeaways for your team and organization? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that the, the challenges were very clear right from the start because we were very aware, first of all, that we weren't going to be able to put all of the content of the Choices program into a weekend 
So there was a challenge as to what we might prioritize, but also how that um, will impact on victim safety. And we were very conscious of the women and children who would be um, in some way impacted on by the program and how could we do it in a way that increased safety. So the, so the first, the challenge we knew from the start, from everybody involved, so from the partner support workers, from managers, from facilitators, we knew that that would be a kind of a question, can we do this in a safe and effective way? So that was very much part of every conversation we had in terms of the content, in terms of the delivery, in terms of what supports outside of the program and before and after the program will be provided to the partner support workers to provide to the partners or ex-partners of the men on the program. So that, that was a challenge. But as we went through the, um, the two training sessions, we felt confident that we had the the critical messages and critical content for the men that would that would impact on the partners in a positive way, but also that we had um, um, processes put in place that would ensure and support the safety um, of the women and children as we went through the weekend process. So that was, again, a challenge. But also, I think it brought, and this is probably a big takeaway, was the kind of passion and expertise that was in the room from our own team and from those that were supporting us, that we felt a certain confidence that we could deliver the program in a, in a safe and effective way. Um, yeah, so, so that, that, that certainly strikes me um, as being the critical things anyway. Um, and I think there's also the value of trying to make your program accessible to as many men as possible, isn't there? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that really <laughs> is a critical thing because as a service, you know, you're you're not very happy when you have people who are referred to you and you cannot and and as a and as a willingness to engage and you cannot respond to them effectively. So I think one of the, yeah, that, that certainly has been a takeaway that we can make the service available to a, a larger number of men and respond to, again, and we're, we're very conscious that it's, it's linked to legitimate inability to attend the evening sessions. We're not trying to make this an easy access for, for anybody to avoid the um, the evening group session if they can attend it. But there, we certainly have a crumb across men who are genuinely interested in engaging and referrers who wanted them to engage as well and families who wished them to, to engage, but they simply were not available in the evening. So again, to, to broaden out the programme, to make it available. And also, I think another exciting takeaway for me, and I'd be very interesting to see if we get the funding to pilot this, is that we have a sense that the weekend program in a residential setting offers something quite unique potentially in terms of the depth that the men can go with support because again in the weekends or sorry in the in the weekly sessions it's usually two hour sessions and um you know those two hours go very quickly and quite a lot can happen but at the same time with the with the weekend, the pace may be different. The time allowed for men to really sink into some of that deep material, which may um, create challenges to them behaving in a respectful and nonviolent way. I think having that opportunity to really deepen the work over a weekend, I'm excited by that possibility because it might, it might just, yeah, give us another component to our program that might we might use in different ways because we see actually this is a different approach that may have impacts that 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 we're not even aware of now but but that certainly is something that i'm excited about um uh, coming through the training and our and our co-design process so let me put that into uh, explicit words. So you're thinking yeah. that it might be interesting to integrate weekends together into your um, ongoing weekly program. Yeah, so, okay. yeah this is <laughs> my sense is 
that they're two different experiences and they may be mutually beneficial in terms of um, deepening the process so that, that then when the men are doing the weekly work, that they're coming from maybe a deeper place into it, that they that they get through something or they deal with something or they face something or they have a, a, a moment of transformation. That means that the other material um, is more easily integrated. Um, that, that's my sense as a possibility. So I will be seeing, well, I don't know whether beginning, middle or end, but I can see that might really be. And it could mean that um, less ongoing sessions were needed, less of the weekly. So we'd be looking at a balance there because, of course, um, as everybody is aware, every everything you add to a program increases the expense of it. So we would have to be mindful of how we manage that in the most um, cost effective way as well. Okay, thank you very much um, mm -hmm. for that insight. Can you already share some upcoming plans for what you developed during the grant to well, move this project forward? Yeah, well, yes, the, the simple uh, the simple step we've taken is to put it into our budget proposal for 2024 for the um, to the Department of Justice and see will they will they support financially um, a pilot of this to, to do one weekend next year. And I've also begun to identify a location because probably something else that's really important is the location. We have already worked in a in a in a location with our facilitator training, which is a which is a, a retreat center. It's a it's a it's a it's away from from the world, as it were. Gives lots of space and lots of safety, and and is a is a is a, is a lovely contained space. So I've already made um, contact with them to see if they'd have a weekend available um, between September and December next year. So to really realistically give us a good run in time if we get the funding so that we can have people ready to go because I think that yeah I think the um, the venue is quite a significant um part of the process as well so thank you very much John for uh, sitting down with me today <laughs> thanks for the opportunity